Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you all for attending the mayor's annual State of the City Address. We appreciate you all being here tonight. Um, I promise we won't keep you here all night. The mayor's speech is only 18 pages long, so we won't be here all night. Anyways, let's go ahead and kick things off. I'm going to invite Pastor Mike White up to lead us in a prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you for this great country that we live in and the wonderful, beautiful city that we live in. Thank you, God, for the leadership that you have put in place to guide and direct this great city. We pray that you would continue to watch over them and lead them and direct them in any and every decision that they make. Father, we pray that you would continue to be with those over in Europe and uh, pray for protection during this tough time, we would be amiss to not uh, lift them up in our prayers today. Pray that you would be with Mayor Courtney, that you would guide his words today, may he speak to us, may he inspire us, and uh, may we all work together for the betterment of our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Now we do have quite a few special guests tonight. Um, one of them being the Mayor's Eagles, which are fourth graders, and their president's name is Harlan, and we have actually invited them here tonight to lead us in the pledge, so I'm going to invite them up, come on Mayor's Eagles, along with our police department that is here. Please join me in welcoming Madison's 
do a quick mic, uh, mic check. Everybody hear me back there? Absolutely. All right. So, absolutely. Hi, Mike. It's great to see everybody here tonight. And uh, as Pastor White was saying, it's inspiring. And what's inspiring is the fact that we're all here tonight, and that is symbolic of the fact that we are all moving Madison in the same direction with the same passion. And so it's a, it's a thrill, and it's an honor for me to be Madison's mayor. So good evening, and, and welcome, everyone. We'll get the program started. We have a great program for you tonight, and uh, we're uh, excited to share with you all the things that are going on around Madison, not just in the last few years, but also what we're working toward. And the theme of tonight's presentation is really about you, Madison on the Move. So thank you for joining us for the annual State of the City Address. And thank you, Ron Bateman and the Fairfield team for giving us this wonderful venue to assemble in. A round of applause for you. And that was Hannah Fagan, my Director of Community Relations and Policy, is what she told me just a few minutes ago. Um, I want to thank all the communications team, Hannah and uh, her team, uh, Clarice and, um, sorry, I'm having a mind, but we're all, we're all here. Thank you so much. Uh, very special to be here because this place, Ashley, sorry, I did not forget you. And Jenna, did Jenna Armstrong make it here tonight? She said she would be here tonight, so I wanted to say thank you to her. But it's a very uh, special to be here tonight because where we are sitting is a shining example of what vision and leadership is all about. And while Mayor Welch is not here and could not see this project through, I'm proud to have been part of bringing his vision and his vision and leadership for this project. This year is quite different than last year's address. Last year, the pandemic caused high unemployment, took our economy over the cliff, and created a human toll as many families lost loved ones. And now we are dealing with high inflation, supply chain issues, and an extremely tight labor market. While we can never dismiss the seriousness of the virus, I'm proud of our city and her residents in their response. While some communities acquiesced to their circumstances, Madison was on the move. We adapted, we spent a significant amount, amount of time planning we sought different outcomes. We rolled up our sleeves and we went to work to move Madison forward. So why are we all gathered here tonight? We'd like to take this time to report on our progress. When I first ran for mayor, I campaigned on having a head for business and a heart for Madison. Those words are more than a slogan. Tonight, we'll show you those were promises kept often reference the term clean, safe, and beautiful when talking about Madison. This is a three-word mission statement, not a mere slogan. It's a mission statement that drives all of our activities in the city and all of our efforts. As your mayor, I promised you that I would focus on improving community safety expanding economic opportunity, and also focusing on our quality of life and placemaking here in our community. Tonight, I'll share with you our progress on all three of these key initiatives. And I want to thank each of you, because you all have made these results possible. Whether it's police, fire, streets, or sidewalks, our public safety initiatives are changing the landscape here in Madison. Under Chief Wallace's leadership, we implemented the recommendations of a diversified, citizen-led public safety steering committee 
which revised 13 of our standard operating procedures, including police pursuits, use of force, implementation of de-escalation tactics, wearable body cams, and we brought integrity that was lacking in the evidence handling process. We've implemented the use of new technology all across the community to catch the bad guys, to aim to damage our community and harm our residents. With unanimous city council support, we made another major investment just this year in safety by increasing full-time officers by another 10% and adding additional capacity with the formation of a five-person, part-time, fully trained, fully licensed patrol team, adding much needed resources, traffic management, as well as fighting drug crime across our community. For the past two years, narcotics arrests are up double digits each year and our property crime is down by a like amount. And perhaps you have heard of Operation Predator Net, resulting in the arrest of over 20 men alleged to have come to our community to solicit minors. After gaining state and national attention for these efforts, the city was invited to join ICAC, Indiana Crimes Against Children. It's a task force that focuses on crime prevention and protecting our youth. It's exciting to bring more resources than ever before to our community. We can never rest when it comes to protecting our children. Recently I had the honor to recognize the contributions of our entire law enforcement teams for outstanding service to our community. We recognized Chief Wallace, detectives Perkins, Scudder, Cutshaw, and Harris. Patrol, Patrolman Officer Midget, Prosecutor David Sutter, Sheriff Thomas, Hanover Town, Marshall, Caldwell, and our Circuit Court Superior Court Judges, E.J. Moe and Blaine Good. Our partnerships with these public safety leaders, as well as the Indiana State Police, taken criminals off the streets and made Madison a safer community for all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I know you agree with me, there is no more important investment that we can make than keeping our community safe. That is the foundation of everything that we want to accomplish. So please give another round of applause. Our law enforcement is here tonight. Thank you again for all your <laughs> Led by Fire Chief Bill DeBreeze, who unfortunately could be here tonight, Madison has a rich history of an all-volunteer fire protection service. These brave men and women responded to over 550 emergencies last year, including 50 fires. When they are not doing that, they are training to be the best. These professionals logged in over 2,000 hours of training last year. I'll never forget the night of June 18, 2021. Ravaged by flash flooding, our brave officers, firemen, and first responders perform water rescues through the night, saving 35 people from their homes. While the waters eventually receded and the damage was significant, thank you, thanks to their heroic efforts, there was no loss of life. Whether it's structure fires, search and rescue, or dealing with hazardous materials, or simply installing free smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors, they always answer the call for help. I offer my sincere appreciation to the men and women serving in our police, fire, emergency, re emergency responses, including our central dispatch, dispatch professionals. Any of our volunteer firemen here tonight, please stand and be recognized. Jake, I know you're here. Jake. Incredible 
what they do. I'll only talk a minute about something that connects us all. Streets and sidewalks. It's often said that if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. In our quest for a clean, safe, and beautiful Madison, we've recognized the importance of how people move around in our community. And we've invested in improving our streets and sidewalks, both downtown and on the hilltop. Our team of employees and engineers are committed, just as I am, to planning, development, and execution to improve the overall experience of residents and visitors. We believe Madison is way more than a someplace you drive through to get to another destination. We believe Madison is the destination. But to achieve our potential, we have to invest in making our community safer and more pedestrian friendly. That is why we are letting data drive our decision making on where to invest. The walk in the book, The Walkable City, author and city planner Jeff Speck writes that we need to cultivate four qualities for the pedestrian. Be useful, be safe, be comfortable, and be interesting. Is there anything boring about walking around Madison? No. no. In the past year, we did multiple things toward accomplishing these goals. We developed a comprehensive plan just for sidewalks. In 2021, we invested in road and sidewalk repairs across town. We created a new sidewalk on A Street near the schools and on E Street heading down toward the riverfront. And in 2023, which is not that far away, it's just next year, we'll bring, we'll bring brand new sidewalks all along Clifty Drive. We also recently announced a $1.5 million investment in the Oak Hill subdivision that will bring new roads, new sidewalks, and much needed improvements to the neighborhood park. This comprehensive data-driven approach will make a lasting impact on our neighborhoods, which leads to a viable community. Finally, following an extensive evaluation of our prized Main Street and working through our steering committee, we took a bold step forward toward our destination development plans. After inheriting former State Highway 56 through downtown, we reimagined the potential impact of that street, upgraded the condition of the road, changed the traffic pattern to add a calming effect, and we reduced the incidence of traffic accidents. And we secured a $5 million grant on our way toward a $20 million multi-year reinvestment complementing our destination Madison strategies. That, folks, is just work on Main Street. On the issue of economic development, I want you to know that we are relentless in our efforts to drive investment to Madison. Each of you here tonight is key to that investment and our successful strategies. Whether you're donating your time to serve on a board or committee, or you're making a financial commitment in a business or in your home, you are elevating Madison. Together we have placed Madison in a position to have an economic renaissance like never before. We've developed a unique approach that is giving Madison the regional recognition that it deserves. Answering a call by Governor Holcomb that spurred a statewide economic development competition, in a matter of months, we developed destination and workforce investment plans for a ready grant. With 42 partners locally, and by partnering with the Southern Indiana Regional Development Authority, we believe we can create a quarter billion economic impact to the city of Madison over the next three years. That was a billion with a B.
I was honored to be part of the RDA's state presentation team, which was, a, which was awarded one of only five maximum grants of $50 million to reinvest across our region. These investments will be made all across our community for infrastructure, parks, roads, trails, housing, industry investment, and tourism initiatives downtown and on the hilltop, as well as a new tech, vet tech school at Hanover College in partnership with Ivy Tech. We will further develop Madison as the gateway to Indiana and the regional gem that all of us here already know that it is. Just this week, one of our homegrown, most successful businesses took another step forward. I'd like to thank our special guest, Harold Hunt, and his family, and his team at Super ATV for their investment in Madison, growing our community and creating well-paying jobs. With Super ATV's expansion and other partnerships we have formed who will invest in Madison, in just a few weeks, we'll, we will be announcing over $100 million of new investment in housing, retail, and industrial development all on the hilltop. Thank you, Harold, and your great team. Economic opportunity doesn't stop there. I'd like to pause now to share with you the first in a series that we call Madison on the Move, which focuses on glide elimination and acknowledges the contributions of Trevor and Van Crafton and Dr. Judy Kaler and many other investors across our community. Madison was founded in 1809 and there's lots of things that are special about our community. The gym of the Midwest, we're still being discovered even though we've been here for over a couple of centuries. We are a unique community to visit and we're one of the first impressions that people from out of state had of the state of Indiana because we border uh, Kentucky. I mentioned that we have a unique community because we have one of the largest contiguous historic districts. One of the challenges that come along with that is how do you preserve that housing and how do you improve it and eliminate life at the same time when what you want to do is incentivize property owners and investors to invest in their properties because we know that that will have dramatic improvement for neighborhood, both in property values and reduction in crime. We have a uh, program called the Preservation Community Enhancement Program. We saw cost as the main barrier that was preventing people from investing particularly in areas that had suffered from disinvestment for a long period of time. We identified targeted revitalization areas and said that if you fit into these categories, the financial incentive that the city will provide you will be three times what it has been traditionally. We formed partnerships with the community, creating incentives, because we know that eliminating blight has so many benefits to our wonderful community. We bought these houses, uh, my brother and I, about 18 months ago, give or take. We ended up bringing them back to life, and we're about 80% complete in the restoration process. We sell on contract. So we do that to provide families and individuals an opportunity to own an asset. And those who can't uh, qualify for conventional mortgage right now, we help them along the way with the process of being able to own it outright. We're all interested in preserving our historic district. So any house that's at risk needs to be worked on, preserve it. As they get torn down one by one, they lose part of our historic district, and that over time can be uh, very detrimental to the historic district. We believe that embracing our past adds significant value for our future. You can't replicate a 19th century architectural style and have the authenticity that it does now. You can build a new property, but it's going to look very, very different and out of character. And so we think the best investment is preserving what we have, but also expanding that wide-ranging strategy to other parts of our community. 
but it didn't apply to the past. So we now have an incentive that applies all across the community, not just in the historic district. For our businesses and our industry, for recruiting people that move here, we need to make sure that Madison is the clean, safe, and beautiful community that they're selling and that they're willing to invest in. values by 30%, reducing crime, and driving unprecedented investment. We've proven that by leading the way with our own financial commitment, we can incentivize new capital investment and produce better outcomes. By leveraging our own capital, we've created incentives that produced nearly a four to one investment return. And in the past year, we have created more investment through the PACE program than the previous seven years combined, all without demolishing a single contributing historic structure. Oh, and I know that sounds good to you, right? And speaking of, speaking of investment, I have to acknowledge all the great work being done to grow our tourism industry. A $41 million economic power punch to our community and small businesses. Just two years ago, tourism was on the ropes. With, with, but with leadership from JCBT, VMI, Madison Main Street, Madison Arts Alliance, Madison Music Movement, and our Chamber of Commerce, our tourism economy is not just surviving, it's thriving. From record innkeeper tax collections creation of sports tourism, improved governance, emphasis on arts and entertainment, and an assertive focus on branding. Madison's tourism is alive and well. These groups have also implemented tools to measure economic impact in real time, and they too can make good investment decisions. To the hundreds of volunteers who give your precious time to make Madison better, I sincerely thank you. Thank you very much. We're also very excited about the new partnership with Norton KDH and the newly formed Bethany Circle Foundation promoting health and wellness. And whether it is economic, social, or cultural, there's one person here tonight Likes to fly under the radar, but he's really in the middle of all of it. Bill Barnes, thank you. <laughs> thank you and the Community Foundation of Madison and Jefferson County for making a difference here at home. I know I probably embarrass you because he's really a humble person. <laughs> I would be remiss when talking about economic development if I didn't mention the City of Madison Railroad and Airport. The city's airport is home to 13 businesses, has a flight training school, hosts the new PHI medical transport business, helicopters, and has a fantastic annual air show. And in 2021, after a decade of attempts, we secured the northern, northern approach runway 21 that furthers our airport's capabilities and appeal. The investment that our airport and our Port Authority and Railroad are making has over a $70 million annual economic impact to the region. We also operate our own utility company that supplies almost 800 million gallons of clean drinking water a year to nearly 80% of Jefferson County. Wouldn't you agree that for such a small town, 
we have a really big reach. Being innovative and more sophisticated and data-driven in our approaches has created unparalleled results and much needed efficiencies on how we govern. And how do we pay for all these investments? We do it by leveraging our capital to attract private investment. A mix of capital from grants, TIF funding, leverage, our general budget, and most importantly, private investment, like the Super ATV. That's what it takes to move our community forward. And it happens over time, but with good planning. After sharing with you our accomplishments in public safety and economic development, I'm most thrilled to talk with you about Madison's quality of life. Would you agree that it is exceptional? I certainly do. <laughs> Making Madison our focus through a collaborative, community-based investment model has generated tremendous results attracting a new generation of Madisonian. Madison boasts over 280 acres of parks with endless activities for visitors and residents of our city and almost 40 miles of sidewalks. And who can forget our fabulous Heritage Trail and our beautiful riverfront. Last year we embraced our golf cart community even more by making it easier to traverse between the hilltop and downtown and between Madison and Jefferson County. We are nearing completion of a new parks master plan that will upgrade our parks, especially our neighborhood playgrounds where our children play. They deserve modern equipment, ADA accessibility, and a basketball court that's not deteriorated. We're committed to making that happen. Yes, thumbs up, right? <laughs> and with a $2 million grant from Lieutenant Governor Crouch and OCRA, and a significant financial support from the City's Redevelopment Commission, we're halfway through the historic restoration of the iconic Crystal Beach swimming pool that will make it available for generations to come. And when I mention doing things more efficiently, we've created information systems that have allowed us to manage better. What we don't manage manages us. And what we can't measure, we can't manage. In the past year, we've reduced deficits at Sunrise Golf Course by 54%, created new marketing strategies, doubled the profit at our city campground, slash youth and adult sports participation fees by approximately 50%. And we adopted new technology platforms that have moved over 20,000 transactions online that previously had been processed manually. Our quality of life not only involves our parks, but the entire culture of Madison has an influence on all of us. From music, which is plentiful because we are Indiana's music city, by the way, to art, to outdoor recreation, and the fantastic events sponsored by a library, such as the Smithsonian Institute's Waterways Exhibit, enjoying a leisure boat ride on the Ohio River, or something really exciting like Rock and Thunder. Or you can drive through the country. There's something for everyone in our beautiful community. Looking to the future, in addition to our public safety and economic development initiatives, we are building a social services strategy designed to help those most in need. With collaboration from our county commissioners, county council, county sheriff, we will be, we will be implementing addiction treatment services in the new jail. A recent grant award from the Indiana Department of Mental Health and Addiction that will be managed by Jefferson County will allow us to hire a community coordinator to perform a needs assessment for our community, for a residential treatment center, 
and coordinate the implementation and strategies for mental health and addiction across Madison and Jefferson County. Amber Finnegan, I'm not sure if she was able to make it here tonight, but I want to thank her uh, for her service to JRAC, which is the Justice Reinvestment Advisory Council, and her leadership in attaining this grant award. With the newly formed Public Arts Commission, by developing a strategy around arts and entertainment, we will recognize the value that art has on a community for our quality of life and as an economic driver. I want to thank Kim Nyberg for being that first person that I wrestled into that role, because she and her team are going to lead the way in crafting our policies and our strategies with regards to public art because it's so vital to our community. Through the Redevelopment Commission, we've committed $150,000 of financial support to help Habitat for Humanity bring the dream of new home ownership to families across our community. And you're on that board, so thank you for your efforts there. And as of today, we've already provided a $250,000 grant to stabilize the historic Ohio Theater so that additional rest restoration work can happen. And it's a dream to have that theater come back to life and be operational again. <laughs> we also intend to embark on the largest infrastructure investment plan in the history of Madison. Over the next several years, we will invest $3 million, as I mentioned earlier, bringing new sidewalks to Clifty Drive. We're widening Wilson Avenue for better industrial traffic management. We're making a multi-million dollar investment on Main Street because it's much more than a traffic corridor. It's about gathering. It's about quality of life. We're going to be making a major investment on our riverfront that includes a new overlook, permanent stage at Bicentennial Park, new housing, park investments, and we'll drive investments on our hilltop too, as I've been talking about tonight. We'll make a $13 million investment in our clean drinking water supply and distribution systems. We will lead the investment in revitalizing the Mulberry Street, 2nd Street corridor that will include newly designed gathering spaces parking, housing, downtown grocery store, all of that will come to fruition. And you saw some images earlier today that, don't you love the mural? I do. We've already acquired the property for a new Gateway Welcome Center at the entrance to, the, to Madison from the bridge. We've acquired property on the riverfront to, acquire, to uh, protect our open space corridor. And we are partnering with the Army Corps of Engineers to bring much needed solutions to the flash flooding problem we've experienced with the Crooked Creek watershed. We're about four or five months already into that year-long process. But that is going to drive our results so that we can mitigate the potential impact of any future flash flooding in that area. Tonight I've shared some of our successes with you, talked about some of the challenges, and laid out our vision for the next several years. As my wife says, I could talk to a wall for about three hours, so I appreciate your all's patience here tonight. But I'm like you and everybody in our community. When it comes to Madison, don't we have so much to share? Because it is clean, safe, and beautiful. And we're delivering on our promises about public safety, economic opportunity, and quality of life. In the new environment, Madison is not only a tourist destination, it's the destination of a lifetime, bringing new permanent residents to our community and help fuel our growth. 
The implementation of this vision would not be possible without the hundreds of volunteers we work with all across the community to improve Madison for all of us. It would not be possible without the support from Governor Holcomb, from Lieutenant Governor Crouch, and all of our state and local elected officials, all of whom are committed to our growth and success. I hope this is crystal clear, and that is the employees of the city of Madison are our biggest asset and some of the most dedicated people that I've had an opportunity to work with. And I know they truly believe in our pledge for a clean, safe, and beautiful Madison. I'd like to ask any city employee who is here tonight to stand and be recognized. Greatly represented by seven city council members: Rich Chatham, Lucy Dottillo, Carla Krebs, Patrick Tevinall, Dan Dottillo, Jim Bartlett, Joshua Schaefer, and our clerk treasurer Katie Rampy. Would you all please stand and be recognized? I know we announced names earlier, but. my family and my wife Tammy couldn't be here tonight and my friends for their love and support it takes two Tammies to keep me between the guardrails <laughs> Tammy Courtney and Tammy Acosta please stand Tammy Acosta <laughs> she has such great southern charm you never know where she's really yelling at you <laughs> Just say thank you. That's awesome. I'll do exactly what you're telling me. <laughs> They're all so instrumental to our success. I'd like to close by sharing with you a quote from one of my all-time favorite athletes, an Olympic distance runner, Steve Prefontaine. While he passed away unexpectedly in a car crash in 1975, his legacy lives on today. Adorning my office is Steve's motto, to give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. We have abundant gifts here in Madison and abundant gifted people. That's really the key to our success. We talked a lot about the, how instrumental investment is to our community. And I believe that 2022 is the dividend year in which we will reap a rich dividend for all the effort that so many people have invested in Madison. Small town with a historic future because Madison is on the move. Thank you and God bless you.